Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my next tutorial. Uh, this will be on longitude, little stress, and change of curvature in beams. Uh, this is basically involving the flexure formula, um, involvement in the beams, uh, looking at it in a 3D perspective, uh, given a side view uh, with dimensions, and you'll have to find the flexure uh, stresses uh, are along the beam given uh, the bending moment that we would work out and we worked out previously and we know how to work out uh, okay so this was obviously devised by as mentioned previously by Dr. Nazareth Sam from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Curtin University of Western Australia so let's jump into it the question we'll be looking at is the last one uh, and it is a bit of a wordy question without an actual diagram itself. It's just giving the side view of the beam right here. Uh, these dimensions are in millimetres as they are uh, small in nature, as it is the side view of the beam, as the, uh, the side of the beam, if you may. Uh, it's a cast iron beam uh, section as shown here. Uh, simply supported at the ends and carries a load of 18 kilonewtons at the mid-span, finding maximum allowable span if the stress is due uh, stress due to bending is not to exceed by 30 megapascals in tension. Uh, neglect, the, neglect the weight of the beam. And what will be the minimum compressive stress? Okay, so let's jump right into it. Uh, so, sorry, uh, before we jump into it. So let's just uh, look at this question for a second, for one moment. And ignore the cast iron and the figures and all these other words here and there. And just look at this simply supported at its ends and carries a load of 18 kilonewtons at the mid-span. So that is basically telling you how to draw the actual beam itself. Okay, so let's just first get this part done. Let's draw our own shear force diagrams, bending moment diagrams, and treat this as if it was asking that. Uh, in, in the end, you do need to do that uh, as to actually answer the question. But let's just quickly draw ourselves a simply supported beam. Okay, so this beam of ours is simply supported at both ends, okay. Oh, there has to be a circular support at one end as to allow transverse uh, um, uh, movement along the x-axis. But let's just not get onto that now. Uh, we have reaction forces here. R A, let's call it, call it like always. And the second one, R B. And then we have a mid point load. The point load being 18 kilonewtons, as we recall. The overall distance is not given of the beam. And if you could tell from the question, we actually have to figure this out ourselves. Alright, and half the distance of the beam on either, either side of the point force. Okay, let's just jump right into it. The sum of forces along the y direction uh, equates to zero. Therefore, the sum of the forces going up equals the sum of forces going down. Okay, so that is just telling us the sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. We worked this out before. Please watch my previous videos as to why this occurs. X multiplied by RB subtract 18 multiplied by X on 2. I'm not going to delve into as while I'm doing this. You all know that. Please watch my previous videos, um, bending moments, etc. Because uh, this sum of moments also equals zero. Therefore, RB would equal 9 kilonewtons. And if we substitute RB into this equation here, we get RA equals 9 kilonewtons as well. Alright. So, the real part, the actual uh, question itself, sorry, well, we're still into the beginning of the question, obviously, uh, the exposition of the question. Okay, so let's just translate this here, and translate three lines going down quickly, and these would be the limits for our bending moment and shear force diagram. So the first one would be our bending moment, uh, sorry, uh, shear force diagram. The second one would be our bending moment diagram. You will know as to why we are doing this. SFD, BMD, we all 
and these acronyms. Okay, so we have a reaction force A going up by 9 kilonewtons, as you can recall what a reaction force A is. It will be linear, let's just be a bit neat here, it will be a constant line until reaching the point here, and then it will drop by 18 kilonewtons down. So it will drop by 18 kilonewtons down, and then it will be constant once more to then transfer to zero. Therefore, it is at an equilibrium. Okay, so this is our this is our shear force diagram uh, completed already. Okay, it's just got to get through this a bit fast because this is the basic part, positive, negative. Okay. And uh, I would do this off the top of my head, but just to show you guys what's actually going on here quickly, um, let's just split portions from here to actually start with the bending moment diagrams. Uh, what these the equations for these lines are, uh, so let's just split uh, for this side here. Okay. Alright. So, yeah. Split, break it off. We have a V and M. We're not working for V because we already worked out the shear force diagram itself. So our A and this total distance, let's call it Z because we already have a X defined. All right, greater than or equal to zero. Divided by two because that's our limits, if you can recall from the diagram. Okay, so the moments positive M would equate to negative R A oh, sorry, positive R A Z that's our equation for the moments let's just substitute a value for Z uh, let's just say Z equals the X on 2 to actually find out uh, we know where it starts but where does it end on this line do you recall from our previous video, what does this end on this line here? So let's just quickly work that out. M would equal, RA is 9 by the way, 4.5x, okay? Don't get confused. Uh, Z is just a uh, variable we're using for now in our case, okay? So we'll go up to 4.5x kilonewton meters, alright? And we know that there are no forces beyond this point, but let's once again just show you guys what's going on here quickly. Okay, so this is the next part we're defining. Another limit here. Overall distance of Z. And let's define our limits here. X divided by 2 is less than Z is less than or equal to the overall x distance. Okay, This is the overall x distance, therefore we're saying the overall x distance subtracts z. You guys recall, please watch previous videos. Positive m, okay, sorry, got to keep saying this, sum m is equal to zero, have to always define it. Yeah, positive m would equal uh, positive 9 X subtracts Z. Okay, is that oh, bad Z? All right, this would then equal to nine X subtracts nine Z. This is our equation for the next line. This unknown line, we don't know what it is, so it's going to be a line here, all right? So let's just quickly test what this line's. What's going to happen to this line? What happens when Z equals X? Well, if you substitute Z equals X, the moments would then equate to zero. Sorry, the moments will then drop to zero. So we know it's a linear line, it's just x. It's a linear x, as we defined before. Basic mathematical parameters. And therefore, we go from here to zero. This is our diagram defined, shear force diagram. Did not need to do this, but just being safe. This is our maximum moments, all right? And why did I want to do this? This is the actual question now that they're asking. So let's get back to the question itself. Uh, watch, please get to my next video as to uh, what is actually going on here, what the question is actually asking. It involves the flexure formula, so you would need to watch my next video in order to understand the flexure formula.